Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about Instagram and how to grow your page. Now, I'm going to be discussing my experiences over the last couple of years of growing my own page, the shortcomings I've come across and the benefits as well. And it's going to be a little bit different as I found from watching other videos. They kind of talk vaguely as they're trying to appeal to as many different types of genres, niches uh, in the market. I'm going to be discussing one niche photography and content creation. I don't know anything about any other market, genre, niche. That's not my business. My business is content creation, photography, video making, and I can only speak on my experiences from them. So let's get into this. And I think the first thing we need to talk about, first of all, is the elephant in the room. How did I grow my following in the first place? Because there has been a, a bit of, if you want to call it controversy over the while, there was a campaign in let me see, 2019 into 2020 to have me removed off Instagram by other Irish photographers because of how I grew my page and let follow backs. There's no point of, in, there's no other way of saying it. I was avidly using the tactic of follow backs amongst other ones as well, but no bots. I never used bots. I never paid for anything. I did all that work myself. But follow backs back then wasn't as such a bad word to say or a bad tactic. It's got a bad reputation because people abused it. But if you were smart about it and you were like, I don't want to grow a page. I want to grow a community. Then follow backs was a really good way of doing that because you'd follow someone, they'd follow you back. And then what I would do is I'd contact them and then I become friendly with them. And I've stayed friendly with a lot of people that I followed. If you look at my page, I still still follow a good lot of people. There's no way I know all of them people. Now, some of them, yes, they are just pages that I had followed, never unfollowed. But I had a rule, if you follow me back, I didn't unfollow you, which broke the whole rule of follow backs. It was a case of you follow people, when they follow you back, it didn't matter. You just give it a little bit of time and you unfollowed everyone. Keep yourself down at like a thousand so that you look nice and popular and then they get celebrity. Oh, I only follow a thousand, yet I have 10,000 followers. Where I was sitting with like 10,000 followers with and 5,000 people I was following going, yeah, I'm, I'm doing follow backs. I didn't even try to hide it. That was follow backs. It's not advisable. Uh, if you are doing it, I would do it to a small degree. Yeah, a little bit here, a little bit there, but be very choosy who you follow. Now that we've discussed that, let's get into the meat and potatoes on this. And the first thing that has to be said, if you've got bad content, no one will follow you. I'm saying it, this is going to be harsh. This video is, I'm not going to pull any punches on this. I am going to be harsh with this. If your content is crap, who will want to follow that? So make sure that your content and whatever you create, video, photo, it's to the best of your abilities and be honest with yourself. Those who lie to themselves thinking they're better than what they are, are going to only end up in disappointment. So you have to work hard, be critical, and make sure that what you're producing is at the highest level of your abilities, and you will get people to follow you. If you go back to my page, go back to the very start. My page was originally a drawing page and my own personal page. And then when I got into photography, I had about two and a half thousand followers by the time I got into photography. And that's when the quality of my content changed. It went from meh, mediocre to yeah, this guy is serious. And once you have that attitude, people will follow you. So I was doing the follow backs, but I had the content to back me up and say, I am worth following. So you have to have that mindset. It's the first thing you need to do is have good content and be critical. Only post up your best stuff. The next thing you have to consider is you should be, in the beginning at least, is to be posting regular enough. You're trying to put yourself forward there every time. Mark Duffy had a cool photo. Mark Duffy had a cool photo. Mark Duffy. I keep seeing this guy come up on the Explore pages over and over again. I wonder what his page is like. You go in and it's just a track record. It's a full grid of quality after quality after quality. And that's what I mean. If you've good content, and you keep a consistent posting regular of good content, you will eventually get people to follow you. Now it comes on to the next point, hashtags. Use the right hashtags. Too many people are using nonsense hashtags. They, they literally looks like they're actually, what they're trying to do is they're trying to act like you're, you're posting to Twitter, where the hashtags are relevant to your caption. Don't do that, don't do that. Hashtag feature pages, because that's where you're going to grow. This is this is the secret now. How I grew the most, apart from the follow backs, was because I was getting featured left, right and center on landscape photography pages 
And because I did the behind the scenes, I was getting featured on all the Canon pages, all the camera gear pages. That was a double winner there. People following me for my landscapes, people following me for my behind the scenes, and I was able to double on it. Now, back then in 2016, 2017, up to 2018, you could post twice in a day. So I would post at lunchtime my behind the scenes, and then at eight o'clock that night, I would post up the final photo. And back then, Instagram didn't penalize you for looking like a spammy page. Nowadays, they do. Um, you could get away with that. So that was double the traction, but I was posting nearly every single day when I was doing that as well. But that was just getting me traction after traction. And I was using Canon cameras, I was using good good gear that I could afford. And people were going, oh, I, I like that. Look, look at the tripod, look at the camera. And there's a lot, there's a, there, it has to be said, there is a lot of Canon fanboys on Instagram. So if you are using Canon, you're kind of on to a winner already by default because people will want to see more of that. So first of all, within your niche of photography, you need to find the relevant feature pages for you. I'm a landscape photographer and I live in Ireland. So I go after all the Irish feature pages, Insta Ireland, Ireland's Ancient East, Inspireland, the full Irish, the list goes on, there's a whole load of them. Have a look at what their requirements are. You might have to tag them, you might have to hashtag them. And it is a good idea to tag and hashtag them at the same time, because they'll get notified over both. And maybe sometimes mention them in the caption is another trick as well, but they may, if they have a big page, they may not see that, but at least the tagging and the hashtagging will be important. But you should really be considering hashtags associated with really good feature pages. If you're doing, if your niche is portraits, you should be looking at OCF portraits, which stands for off camera flash portraits. They're really good. You will grow a lot with that page. If you can get really good behind the scenes photos taken off your portrait shoots, then consider ISO 1200 magazine. Anytime I have been featured on that page, my page has grown plus a thousand followers in one day. I posted up this BMW photo. It got featured on their page, 3000 followers in one day. Absolutely insane. They're the pages you need to be going after. Now, when we were speaking about behind the scenes stuff, so I have two really good cameras right now. I mean, I've always run two cameras. Before I used to have, when it was Fuji, the X-T2 and the X-T3. Before that, it was the X-T2 and the X-T20. And when I was with Canon, it was the 6D and the 70D. So with that said, I had really good cameras. I had really good lenses, so I could take really nice behind the scenes. So what I would do is I would tag the companies that I'm using. So, you know, Sony cameras, Sigma lenses, Vanguard Tri iPods, Andy Cine field monitors, aperture lights, you name it. There's a, there's a whole host of whatever you're using, you know, tag them because if the behind the scenes is good enough for them to use marketing wise, they will approach you. So it's a good idea for that. Uh, and as well as that, then you've got other pages. So if your behind the scenes stuff is, it, you think is pretty good, then consider tagging pages like mirrorless geeks, mirrorless cameras, camera setup club, camera underscore setups. There's a whole, again, there's a whole heap of these as well available. You just need to do your proper research to find the right pages to suit your niche, to hashtag them, get featured and grow. And that is literally the quickest way for you to grow. I've been growing, I grew 300 followers this week alone because of the reel I put up with the behind the scenes and the final photo that I did for my B-roll for my XP Pen uh, review. And I got featured on a lot of camera pages. Now, I didn't get featured on their, pay on their pages. I got featured on their stories and I got followers from that. And then some of my behind the scenes lately have been featured on different camera pages. And again, that all added up to more followers this week. The next topic everyone says is use the right captions, ask questions. I have no idea what the best solution is when it comes to captions. I have no idea. Uh, I just, I talk about the photo. I talk about the photo. I talk about what happened to me or the experience. I may ask a question. I may not ask a question. I might have a long caption. I might have a short caption. So for me, with my growth, captions have literally had that much of an effect on my photos, I think. I, they haven't had much impact with me. So I can't talk about captions because I haven't seen any benefit really between putting up a crap caption, putting up a great caption, having hashtags in your captions, not having hashtags in your captions. I still put hashtags in as a comment because I don't really want them seen and being, I like my captions being kind of clean. I think the next thing to consider then is what you're posting up and what will suit Instagram and at the minute they want to attract the TikTok follower. It's they're not even trying to pretend. Reels is huge, absolutely massive. I've had a good few reels get past 20,000 views. Like it's just 
boom like now, any of the videos never did that it's just they, they have a real big push on reels so if you do have good reels again it's all about good content it's the running theme with this video make sure your content is good make sure it's at a good level because people are so hard to impress they'll just scroll past and that's the issue you want them to stop dead on your page so if your reel is engaging enough, if it isn't relevant to what they're looking at, they'll just skip on through. So make sure that the reels are good, but start using more and more reels as you will get that extra push from Instagram. It's their new toy and they want you to play with it. Now we come finally to my last section, which is stories. Get used to stories. Stories is a great way to get your followers engaged. And anyone who follows my page knows that I love a good story. I love to talk, I love the sound of my own voice, that's why I'm doing a big push on YouTube lately. Um, but ever since Instagram brought in stories, I stopped using Snapchat, literally. I, within about two or three months, uh, my sister-in-laws were slagging me that, oh, your, your videos are great if you just stop talking about photography, it's boring, why don't you go onto Instagram where you have more followers? And I did, and I instantly had, I would get 100 views on Snapchat, I put up my first story on Instagram, 300 views, I stopped using Snapchat, instantly. Now the only thing I will say about stories is don't be fake. If you're trying to be like you know energetic and all that you see me on my stories I'm not even trying to do that that's just literally the way I go on so don't try and be someone you're not. Don't do the influencer voice and all this nobody likes it and you sound stupid and you look silly so if that's not your voice don't do it. Don't do anything that's not you people will see straight through it and just be honest, the more honest you can be, because there's, there's a lot of falsehood on social media lately, you know, and it's just, it's it's a breath of fresh air to find someone who's honest. So be honest, be yourself. And if stories aren't for you, then don't do stories. But it is a great way to let your followers know, especially like me, who's fighting the algorithm like mad at the minute. Some of my followers do not see any of the posts that I post up, but they will see it if I post it on my story. So that's another thing as well. Post your posts on your story and let them click into it. Okay, now I'm going to talk briefly about my blue tick because I know from the thumbnail you're going to go, he's going to teach us how to get a blue tick. And I posted up on, on Instagram today to announce this video. And a lot of people were congratulating me for getting the blue tick, even though I got it nearly two years ago. I chanced my arm. I applied for it. I sent in the photo of my driver's license like you're supposed to. And I got denied. And I went, and when I got denied, I went, eh. So what, come again? So I chanced my arm again and I changed it that I was not a photographer what I put in that I was an influencer. Now, my page is Mark Duffy Photography. My website is Mark Duffy Photography. My YouTube channel is Mark Duffy Photography. My Facebook page is Mark Duffy Photography. And Twitter is Mark Duffy Photo because you, you, it won't take enough characters to put in photography. So I have four avenues where my name is called Mark Duffy Photography. So I had enough proof across the web, the web, to say that I am legitimately me. So they, they by chance said, uh, yeah, you are Mark Duffy. So, but I have no idea. I applied for it. I got turned down. I chanced my arm again and whew, look at me. I got a blue tick and it does nothing for you. It is good for approaching companies because they can see that you're serious about this. But other than that, it's not really, don't worry about it. If you get it, you get it. But I have no secret to it. I put in that as a photographer the first time and I know the second time around I put in influencer but I was busy doing something else so I didn't really take much stock I was just like oh what I'm going to apply for this again and just put it in and by chance got it. Finally I just want to conclude this video really quickly with just by saying Instagram is an addiction machine. There is a theory that I have and I'll just briefly just mention it and if you are interested in me maybe expanding on a full video in this leave a comment below but I do believe there's a thing called a slipstream where they find a page that is found a niche and it's getting traction and they open the floodgates to you for about nine to ten months and it's up to you to get as quicker following as you can. It happened to me, I got to 30,000 followers and then overnight, boom, it stopped. And I know a good few other pages that's happened to. Uh, but again, if you want me to go into further detail with that, let me know if you're interested in hearing that. So I hope this helped you out. I know it's not exactly what some people were looking for, but there is no magic solution to Instagram. They make it extremely hard for you to grow right now. And um, in the last month, I've grown 800 followers and I've lost 600. Can't explain it, don't know what's going on. And I beg the question if it is actually authentic. Maybe I have only grown 200 in the, in the last month and that's just fabricating things to make me work harder to possibly maybe wanna have me pay ads. Having a clue, but 
that's the reality of things. Very, very last point is do not get stressed over this. Try and have fun with this. Use it as a reason to improve your skills like I have because I got rid of the PlayStation. I do not play gaming. I play social media. And the benefit out of this is I've become a great photographer. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to try and be modest. I know I'm really good because I went full time at it. I'm good enough to earn money from it. Use it as a reason to get yourself better. Don't stress about it, don't get upset about it, but just improve. It, it's a reason to improve. You're trying to impress the hardest parent out there, Instagram. That's what you're trying to do. So don't get annoyed with them. Just, just take it on the chin, work harder, work harder, work harder. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something from that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell to get notified the next time I post up. I post up every Thursday. And since we're talking about Instagram, maybe check out my page, see what I'm about. And if you like me, give me a follow. And you can find me on every other social media under the name Mark Duffy Photography. And until the next time, later Gators. <laughs>